Hello and welcome to another standard game the video. Today we're taking a look at a four color human aggro deck built around Ishin, two heavens as one. This three mana, three four says if a creature attacking causes a triggered ability of a permanent we control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So Ishin is perfect in this deck where we've got cards like Adlin making one once when we attack and Anim Pakal also getting plus one counters while making gnome tokens. We've got at one mana the frontliner giving a creature plus one plus one when it attacks Attacks, so that can also benefit from Ishin. And then at two mana, there's Casting Naturalist, making red or green mana when attacking. So the curve of turn two Naturalist, turn three Ishin still nuts us two extra mana after attacking, which is sometimes enough to cast an Inti or another Naturalist in our second main phase. And then Inti is also great here as a source of plus one counters and trample, and can maybe discard some lands in the late game and replace those with more relevant spells. And then also being able to pump up our creatures and maybe trigger it twice with Ishin in play is pretty great. And then of course we are going to play two copies of Thalia at the very least, since our deck is all creatures except for the adventure on Kellen, which might be taxed by Thalia, but we can always do that on turn one, so it doesn't really get in the way. Making a map token can be a way of growing our creatures, so they're large enough to keep attacking. And then Kellen is awesome when it starts attacking, especially with Ishin in play, as we get to reveal the top card. If it's a creature with mana value three or less, it goes straight into our hand, otherwise we can still decide to put that card in the graveyard, so that gives us a ton of card selection and card advantage as the game progresses. And then at 3 mana, we've already discussed Adlin and Anim. Anim also especially synergistic with cards like Inti, giving it additional plus 1 counters, and Helena and Elena can also give our Anim Pakal a bunch of extra plus 1 counters, which will translate into more gnomes. And then the cherry on top is Roaming Throne, Naming Human, which can also benefit from all these various triggers, since almost all the creatures in this deck are human, with the exception of the Frontliner. And then of course if Naturalist transforms, it's just a werewolf, but still plenty of synergy to be had. And then Roaming Throne is also great with the partners, which in turn does not synergize with Ishin, since it's not an attack trigger, but of course there's still plenty of synergy across the whole deck. And then to help out against mono red aggro, we've got four copies of Lunark Veteran to gain some life back, especially once we start making tokens with Adlin and Anim, and that will also get doubled by Roaming Throne. And then both Frontliner and Veteran are cards we're pretty happy to discard to Inti, since we can still get value out of the graveyard. If we discard Veteran, we can turn it into a Phantom, and then Frontliner we can unearth to get a bit of extra damage in. And then the mana base includes both Cavern of Souls, making our humans uncounterable, and Secluded Courtyard, naming human, and that's the reason why we can get away with four colors in this aggro deck. And we're usually gonna curve out quite nicely, only maybe hampered by some of the fast lands coming into play tapped later in the game, but early on they're perfect, not costing us any life either. So we've got the cliffs, Copperline Gorge and a Razor Verge Thicket, so we can usually still adventure Kellen early on, cast our white one drops, and then still curve cards like Naturalist into Ishin without too much trouble. And then Plaza of Heroes also gives us a bit of utility in the late game, making our legendaries indestructible, and then can also fix our mana for a few of them. And then we've got one Plains in case we need to search it up if our opponent channels a Boseju, for instance. And then Iganjo can also be channeled for usually just a single white mana, giving us a bit of interaction, since otherwise our deck is just trying to attack and hope for the best since we don't have much creature interaction. Could potentially make room for more channel lands, but of course we also need lots of fixing to be able to cast some of these cards on curve, so it's always a bit of a give and take. I did also consider adding Ryu to this deck, as suggested by my supporters on Patreon, since it can also give us a ton of extra attack steps when paired with Ishin. Sadly, Ryu really needs us to have a Samurai or Warrior in play the same turn we cast it, so we can get immediate value, and there simply weren't enough good human that were also samurai and warriors, since we do need our creatures to be human to synergize with Roaming Throne, and so we can cast them with Cavern of Souls and Secluded Courtyard. So cards like Tenacious Underdog could be options as a black two drop. There's also Radas Firebrand, which has a bit of synergy throughout the deck. Problem is we don't have any basic line types really to enable the ability, so I just ended up cutting Ryu and the Samurai and Warrior package, but of course we still have Ishin to synergize with plenty of our creatures. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Frontliner into maybe a turn to Naturalist. Can give us a small mana boost, make it easier to journey on and then play Kellen. Put on blue-white so far.
can't counter an Angelist because of Cavern. So that resolves. There's a chance your opponent can flash in a blocker for the frontliner here. But I think I still attack and try. Felt more like they were holding a counter spell and realized they couldn't go for it. Experimental Augury points towards a apparatus control deck, which typically has a lot of sweepers, so that's not going to be easy for us to handle. And now ossification to deal with Naturalist. Okay. Next up, could adventure Kellen and cast it. So we can generate a bit of card advantage as opposed to playing Inti, which is better once we have more lands in play. This is a matchup where Thalia would have been pretty useful. Now it does transform to nighttime for future werewolves. And we can expect our opponent to have a Wandering Emperor in hand, but at least we're going to trigger Kellen. So the question is whether we play Inti. And uh, yeah, I guess that's reasonable. We might hit a land drop that way. And then we can grow Frontliner. Discarding Veteran which we can also get back from the graveyard eventually. So Frontliner targets Kellen. And find another Naturalist, although don't have the mana to cast it, same with the one in hand. So we might go for the map token here, second main. Now our opponent's probably looking to set up a sweeper next turn. So use the map, hope to hit a land. Alright, so next turn we can get back on the board with a roaming throne, perhaps. Opponent's going Union into a Sunfall is my guess. Union gaining them quite a bit of life back. And it's going to be a Jace instead, okay. So they're on the mill deck. Shrink down Inti. So, let's see. We should be able to take out Jace just from Inti's ability. So don't need to overextend by playing Roaming Throne. So yeah, let's just uh, go to Attackers. Inti itself doesn't have to attack. And then discard a land is probably fine. Might hit another one. Okay. Cavern in the graveyard with Kellen. And Jay's down. Retreat is the sensible action. So if we don't want to overextend too much, we can journey on with Kellen, keep up Plaza of Heroes, but most of their sweepers would exile my stuff anyway, so I don't think there's a point in keeping up Plaza. Instead, we can just get back a Lunark Veteran, which I don't really care about. And then maybe hang on to the map token until later. Field of Ruin could be relevant. Opponent passes. Okay, so no sweeper. Possible they've got a White Sun's Twilight in hand, which next turn can wipe the board. And then we might want to keep a plaza. For now, let's just attack. Opponent does have a Wandering Emperor now. I'm going after Frontliner so it can come back from the graveyard, also can protect it with Plaza. 
And then discard another veteran. Adeline's probably going to waste, and Cliffs can go to the graveyard. Yeah, we could play Adeline, but it feels like a White Suns is incoming. If they don't have a sweeper, then Adeline would potentially be the final nail. But it does feel like overextending a little bit. I guess we'll give it a shot, and then I don't think I cast anything else. If Adlin survives, we're in good shape. Possible they're still sitting on a few counter spells as well that they haven't been able to use. Emperor minuses, so probably no sweeper then. And a Soaring City to bounce Adlin. That's fine. So next up, play Adlin before attackers versus play Roaming Throne, which is not uncounterable since we don't have Cavern on Golem. So I'll replay Adlin. Probably don't need Plaza. And then Inti can pump itself. And that resolves. And go to attackers. Alright, hit another land, that's good. And a Roaming Throne, I probably don't need to keep a second one. And then we certainly have enough pressure in play. Can maybe still sack a map token here to dig a little bit deeper. Pakal is perfect too. Alright, let's uh, go for Veteran maybe. And then if they don't have a Sweeper, it's gonna be hard for them to survive. This might be their chance to use a counter spell, Make Disappear, yep. That's fine. Yeah, Cavern of Souls has its moments for sure. They could feel the Ruin just to make me shuffle on him, but yep, opponent's just too far behind. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and yeah, we've got a Keeper. Adventure Kellen, played on two. Turn three, Ishin can uh, potentially trigger Kellen twice. And the mana is going to cooperate. Opponent with turn one Skralv, so an aggressive deck or a poison deck. Stick to the plan. Even have an Igancho for interaction. And there's not too many two drops that can stop Kellen in its tracks. Okay, Jawbone Duelist, so it is a poison deck. Yeah, that one's scary. But I'll still be attacking into it. And then Igancho gets around Skralv's protection since it uh, is not a white spell. The lands are colorless. Don't need another Roaming Throne. So that can go in the graveyard. Cavern of Souls. I actually wouldn't mind drawing. So we can hang on to Iganjo if we plan to play Roaming Throne. So if we can find some of our creatures like Adlin or Anim Pakal, partners would be great. Even an Inti can amp up the pressure significantly. And with Kellen triggering twice, that shouldn't be too difficult to find. Their opponent can use Skralv to let Duelist poison us for four, thanks to Double Strike and the Adda Toxic. And that's what they'll do. So they've got us on a pretty fast clock as well. And besides Iganjo, our deck doesn't really have creature interaction. 
And Hive can eventually gain them some life back as well. Well, I think we still stick to the plan. Roaming through and being colorless also helps against uh, Skrelv. And then let's see, there's a Copperline Gorge on top, don't need that one, so put it in the graveyard. And find a Naturalist as well. Okay, so drew two cards off Kellen's ability. Still looking for one of the aforementioned creatures, Inti, Adlin, and uh, Animpakal partners. So there's quite a few we would be happy to draw here. And our opponent's seed core is active, so they can pump Duelist up to a 3-2 double strike. In which case we would trade for Roaming Throne, I think that's acceptable. Otherwise we would take another 4 poison. And this might be a turn where we can easily keep up Iganjo opponent with a second duelist. They did also gain a bunch of life of Hive, so they're back up to 18. So yeah, that single hit from duelist enabling Corrupted was a pretty big deal. And now we're looking at maybe sack a map token. Definitely want to keep up Iganjo. I guess we can see what Kellen finds first. And then we can decide afterwards. Veteran gaining life is not super relevant. Cavern can go to the graveyard. So we are seeing a lot of cards here with Kellen. So let's say we play Naturalists, play Veteran, play Frontliner, and still keep up Iganjo. Now I guess the fact that we're not sacking the map token is a little suspicious. We could also get punished if her opponent has removal for one of our legendaries, because then Iganjo goes back to costing two mana to channel. But we also now have a wide range of colors to help against Skrelf's protection. Frontliner we're happy to throw under the bus. If we were playing best of three, then this is the type of matchup where I would want to board in the Liberator, the werewolf that can destroy artifacts and enchantments. Especially once it transforms to nighttime, it gets to do so when attacking. Which is pretty strong with Ishin. Charge of Might taking out our 2 2. So, yeah. Could have been bad had they taken out one of our legends. Opponent attacks. Take out Duelist. And then. Can just block both. Seems fine. Just keep our life total healthy. And they both provide value out of the graveyard. Opponent probably has a backup Skrelv if they made that attack. Makes sense. Okay, so we'll keep on attacking. Maybe including a Frontliner that we can unearth. That's plus 3 damage, so it's not quite lethal. Yeah, I guess we can save that for next turn. And uh, start by attacking, see what we find of Kellen. Cavern goes to the graveyard, so does Courtyard. And then play Naturalist, get back Phantom, and then maybe sack a map token now. And Adlin's what we want. Okay. Tokasia's Welcome seems a bit slow now, but can be quite strong in the grindier matchups. There's a Seed Core we have to worry about, but if we block both, it's not too bad for us. 
So our opponent's going to be gaining 4 up to 12, and then I'm pretty sure we can end the game next turn. Adlin unearth Frontliner. Get a bunch of triggers. Courtyard we don't need. And Thicket we don't need. And our opponent falls to exactly zero. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We do need to find a third land and don't have a two drop lined up here. So I've got a few issues. But Ishin and Adlin are quite strong together. I'll give it a shot. So ideally draw a two drop and then a third land. Up against the red aggro, so turn on veteran is gonna shine. And Athalia. One of our better two drops in the matchup. Now we really need a third land, and I think almost any land will do here. I guess we do need to white specifically for Adlin, but I'm happy enough casting a 3-4. So Spear Attacks, not gonna block when they could have a Monstrous Rage. Most likely just gonna see removal, no, nope, just a Monstrous Rage on Swiss Spear. And we found a third land, perfect, so... Two Heavens as one. Hit for three. And then now, if we find white mana for Adlin, we get to go off. Could also consider blocking since we have another 3-4 here, but yeah, opponent concedes. Thalia is just too much for them to handle. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got the combo of Anim plus partners. Don't have much else going on early, but we do have a lot of 1 and 2 drops we could draw in the meantime. So I'm gonna give it a shot. Having backups for both is nice too, so we're more resilient against removal. Roaming Throne could be a nice addition, but we would prefer some cheaper cards. I guess I'll play Cavern. Anim without a creature to enable it right away is a lot less exciting. But looks like it's probably gonna get taken out right away. And then next turn maybe go for Roaming Throne before deploying the rest of our hand. Anim eats a Gopher Throat. So they probably don't have a cutdown in hand. And a Trespasser's next. Okay, so Roaming Throne, if it can survive, is a pretty decent blocker too. Survives go for the throats. So hopefully they don't have an Edict to make me sacrifice it. And Glissa, that's kind of a roadblock. Although we can eventually hope to go wide. So if we go for partners, it does trigger twice, and then I can maybe pump up a frontliner, but I wouldn't be attacking with it. And then next turn we could maybe go off with Anim, we'll see. Glissa can also remove counters from our permanents. Now Deep Cavern Bats to take Anim, most likely. Although Inti is still a useful tool to have. So we won't be getting that back since we aren't running any removal spells. Another Throne. I guess we can give that a shot. Just make all our creatures enormous. And at some point we'll start attacking. Up 
opponent lets it switch to nighttime, veteran to draw, good to discard to Inti as well. And then with Inti, we can grow partners. Although opponent could be holding up removal now. Do have a plaza. So there's a lot of layers. Alright, so let's say we do go to attackers. Then I guess we can also grow Inti. Let's see if that resolves. Right, they've got an Infernal Grasp. So in that case, no attacks. And then I could still hang on to Veteran for future Inties, or we can play it now. And then if this attacks, I can turn it into a Flyer, which can start going over. So that's maybe the plan. Back to night time, Adlin the draw. So, can stick to the plan. Use Plaza. So we can get back our Phantom. Yeah, what if we just attack with everyone now? Can pump Adlin, pump Veteran twice. Yeah, they still have some decent blocks lined up on partners and on one of the larger creatures. They would eat Adlin, eat partners, maybe chump, take... Well, it's getting close to lethal, actually. I think we still wait a turn. And then, I mean, Veteran's gonna get eaten by Glissa anyway, so I probably shouldn't bother pumping it. Get to make a bunch of one ones. Gain some more life on the way out. And then, assuming they block Veteran, we can bring it back in the form of Phantom. And Decadent Dragon's fine. Opponent actually declining to block Veteran. Makes it more likely that we can attack all out next turn. And then we'll have Plaza of Heroes for protection. So we can save one of our legendaries. Okay, go to attackers. We've waited enough. Protect Adlin, might see removal in response. We don't. So as the dust settles, our opponent's pretty dead. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a 
reasonable hands. I guess we can't quite cast Ishin and we can't quite cast Adlin with double Copper Langorge. So that's a little awkward. But most lands I draw would enable both. Yeah, a little bit borderline. But I'll keep it. Any two drop we draw we can cast. And then most lands are fair game. Opponent on the red-white tokens deck. And there's our white mana, so... Next turn we can... Maybe go for Adlin, maybe Ishin first. And this might be a reinforcements end of turn. Okay, so... Can't quite be guaranteed to play partners next turn. If I play Adlin, they get to ambush veteran, but we do get to make a 1-1. Yeah, it seems fine. The opponent probably is not going to want to trade for their tokens here. So just eat veteran, take one. And then end of turn, reinforcements. Okay, so next turn with Ishin we get to trigger Adlin twice. Opponent setting up with the Evangelist. Do they also have a Knight Errant to Convoke? They do. So that's the full Convoke here. So it would be awesome to be able to cast the partners and grow Adlin to attack past Knight Errant. And we can. May as well attack all out since they can block a 1-1. So our opponent takes 7. And uh, yeah, with Ishin we can start going wide if Adlin attacks. But our opponent's also keeping up here, so it's going to be hard to break through. We'll need Inti for Trample, perhaps. Trampling a large Adelin could do it. And they can also start activating Warden of the Inner Sky to who eventually fly over. So I think we're still a little bit behind, despite having a big life total advantage and being able to curve out quite well. There's a second Knight Errant. Finding two more Wardens, which they luckily cannot cast right now. pair of frontliners instead, so it's a lot of damage coming across next turn if Evangelist attacks. Now they're considering what to tap for Warden, if anything. Wow, never mind, Pwn's got a third Knight Errant. And Anim Pakal the draw. Well, Anim plus Partners is pretty nice. And if that doesn't do it, I'm probably dead next turn, so... I'll just go for it and see what happens. Opponent's got two blockers. Block, block, take... Seven, so one shy of lethal, but that does mean we shut off Battlefield Forge. And we still have an Adlin on defense. Yeah, possible attacking with Veteran early on was a mistake, since we could have gained a lot of life back. But we'll see. Yeah, Recruiter they can cast without paying life, and this should be enough. Can block a Knight Errant. And uh, it's probably close to 40 damage here. Alright, GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. We'll need a third lane eventually. And there we have it. Turn 2, I'm liking a Naturalist. And uh, I think I do play Cavern since I could have a counter spell here. for one, 
then next turn, with the extra mana, we can maybe adventure Kellen in addition to playing Adlin. And then we have two cards that work with the uh, Daybound and Nightbound mechanic. But with multiple naturalists, transforming them actually becomes quite threatening. Opponent is also playing white, so sweepers could be in our future. But uh, yeah, opponent casting a deluge to keep it daytime. And they're facing quite a bit of damage on the way back. Inti the draw. So yeah, if we go for an Impakal, we're begging the opponent to cast a sweeper like Sunfall or even Farewell would do it too, since we don't have a Thalia in play. So... Let's see, how much damage are we working with? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, I'm not gonna get plus 5 here, am I? I guess I could go for Inti, hoping to hit a Thalia. But chances are pretty slim. So maybe it's just attack and then cross our fingers that there's no sweeper. And I'll go for a map token activation on... Veteran. And smash. Our opponent's at two, and we can still use a map token here. And then Kellen. Not the most exciting follow-up. Finding, like, a partners would be a little bit better. And our opponent does not have a sweeper and explodes. Sweet, onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Facing a poison deck. Turn one chorus. At least we can get on the board quickly. And have to play Cavern if we want to play turn 2 Naturalist. I'm fine trading, I think. Even though they get a replacement. want to prevent Seed Core from activating and pumping future 1-1s. One and then Naturalist can give us a bit of a mana advantage. So what I could do is play Ishin, attack, and then play Inti, second main. And now I can also play a Razor Verge Thicket. Wouldn't be targeting the opponent's creatures, so Rot Priest, mostly relevant if the opponent has their own pump spells. So we haven't taken any poison yet, which is nice. But that's probably about to change. No, wow, her opponent concedes, so I guess our start was good enough here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Got a 2-3-4 curve. And the mana's good, now we even have a 1 mana play we can make. Facing blue-white. I guess we don't have double wine for Adlin yet. Let's go for Kellen. And then Ishin can potentially trigger Kellen twice next turn. Mirex does point towards a more controlling deck. So there's an argument for Cavern of Souls, so we can make Ishin uncounterable. They didn't seem to have a counter last turn. And uh, I don't want Cliffs entering tapped later, so I think I'm still. Running it this way. Okay, that works. Hopefully find some creatures. Uh, Razor Verge can go to the graveyard. And courtyard. I'm maybe okay drawing. Just to have an extra untapped land. Can always discard it to Inti later, although Veteran's also good to discard. Opponent on three lanes still. Well, could be our window to 
resolve a partners and do some damage. Might be the best way of punishing a slow start. Find Anim Pakal and Cliffs can go to the graveyard. Alright, opponent's facing lethal next turn. And they haven't cast a single spell. Sunset Revelry, maybe a way back in. Although Roaming Throne's also pretty great here. So what's the best we can do? Anim versus Roaming Throne. I guess we can play both Anim and Inti. Yeah, that has to be better. And just load all our counters onto Anim. Let's see, we want to make sure to trigger Inti first. And then I guess Kellen first too, in case we find more stuff we can discard. Such as an Inti, and maybe start with Veteran. Counters on Anim. And... Uh, Maybe Ishin can go over Inti. And then now we'll get to gnomes. That's 11 gnome tokens, 7 power trampler. Yeah, our opponent seems dead. Well, that uh, certainly showcased our synergies quite nicely, admittedly against an opponent who didn't cast many spells, but I'm sure they had some sweepers in hand that they weren't able to cast in time. So yeah, the power of Ishin in this deck cannot be underestimated, and it finally gets to see a bit of standard action after mostly being relegated to a commander card. So I'm pretty happy with where the deck ended up. Can still be fine-tuned, of course, lots of options when it comes to humans, legendary creatures, and cards that trigger when attacking. So there's endless possibilities, but um, overall pretty happy where this one ended up. Could maybe make room for an extra channel land or two, but at the same time we also need all those dual lands for mana fixing, so it's always a bit of a give and take. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.